How you doing? I'm not used to being tipsy. There's the alcohol taking over a These little bit. These people got me drunk. First and foremost, rap man, welcome to Drunk History, the show where we get nice and inebriated. You, said, you took my land there. Oh, is it your land? Yeah. <laughs> Regardless of what you say in the show, drink responsibly, yeah? Today, I'm going to tell you about Ya Asantua. She was a warrior queen. She was a true Ghanaian heroine. She stood up against colonial powers and she led an army against the British Empire. Empire, you know. Big. Yeah. Mm. She was fearless and she was brave and she was courageous and she was a true Ghanaian heroine. You could base a superhero on her. Sounds like a movie already. Doesn't it sound it does. like a it movie? It does sound like a movie. I am Ya Asantoa. I'm gonna say it right. You've got to say it with the rhythm. I am Yazantwa. I am Queen Mother of Ijisu in the Asante Empire. And my origin story is one of constant conflict. Constant, constant conflict with the British. So the Asante story is at the heart, the very heart of Asante existence. And um, the Asante tribe was founded by Ose Tutu. Or say to two, and his highest priest, who was a Konfoenochi. But this high priest apparently reached up to the sky and summoned from the sky a mystical object, which came down. This Crazy. mystical ob object, boof. And that's a fact, not myth. It's a fact. That's pretty supernatural. It I don't think it, you know. Earlier, I said it was boof. I don't think that's very mystical. Um. I think it was like. The golden stool became the most sacred object. Could it do anything? It, Is it whoever sat on it, did they yeah, get good fortune, did they get whoever, good health? Whoever sat on it, it determined his right to rule over the Asante Empire. And so now I want you to cut to 1900. Here enters this pompous uh, British governor, Sir Frederick Hodgson. I am Sir Frederick Hodgson, and I am going to travel to Kumasi, which I'm told is the capital of this so-called Ashanti Empire, and I am going to give a provocative speech because I'm a provocative kind of British Empire person. You, the Ashanti chiefs, let me, let me make sure I say it, not how the Ashanti people themselves said it. I am going to call forward the Ashanti chiefs, because you know the real way to say it is Ashanti, right? Mm. You, the Ashanti chiefs, you, you need to bring forward your stool so that I can sit on it. Also, I don't want to just sit on it. I want to take it back home to Britain for the Queen. She is entitled to the stool. Where is the stool? And literally, he said to them, you Ashanti chiefs have incurred war debt. Wow. We are not going to pay for this war with you. You are going to pay for this war on your land, in your country, on your, in your empire with us. Hey, these people who... And I swear, this is a moment that it could inspire Black Panther free. Oh, well, I'm here for that. Enraged by the disrespect, she called her people, yeah, oh, come, come, come. And she rallied her people uh, at a village meeting and she said, listen, listen, listen. If you, the men of Asante, if you won't go forward, then we, the women, will. I shall call upon my fellow women and we will fight the white man. She roared. As if she actually roared. Fresh from roasting her men in this stirring speech, she picked up her gun, she hoisted it up into the air, and it was like, boo, 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 boo! <laughs> she way, fired it, she up. fired it with a passion. And they appointed her war leader. Yeah. War leader of the Asante right then and there. When they say you, you queen mother will be our war leader, they recognized in her, her power. So big up to the Ashanti men. For the husbands that wouldn't join the resistance, those women refused to have sex with them. The women just go too far, man. But I get it, man, you know? I'm, I'm assuming after that, a lot of men would have eventually signed up. Within days, news spread and thousands, thousands of women were signing up and joining the Santoir. And those men, many of those men who'd been really, really reluctant to join, as they saw how many women she was enlisting, they decided that they too would sign up. People were like, ah, but why? 
Why do you want our stool? In what world do you think we will bring you our stool and you can sit on our stool? We will not, we won't bring it. We won't, we will not. I can't really imagine what the queen, the British queen, Karen, with the bad hair, would have said when she realized she wasn't gonna get that stool. It's rumored that she had a tantrum like, what? I can't have the stool. The stool of those African people belongs to me and it should be here, right here in Britain. And remember what I told you about that stool. It's at the very, it's at the heart mm. of our existence, our Asante existence. Whether you believe in the myth or not, Ghanaian people died. They gave up their lives to protect that stool. What it was was a source of emotional and psychological power yeah. for the Asante Empire and for the Asante people. And it still is. For us, it's our history and it's our heritage. But yet they wanted to just come and take it. No. And, and you guys pay you can't, you, you well. can't, You can't come free working in our country and take our heritage. They said no. Something like that. The British Empire never got their hands on that stool, and even if you were to ask Ghanaians today, where, where is the golden stool? Where is the golden stool? We will never tell. No, 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 we don't do that. Yao's actions are woven into the fabric of Ghanaian, African, and the black diaspora's history. She literally stands as a symbol of black power. And the idea that no matter what, you always lead by example, even in the face of overwhelming injustice. So here is to my warrior queen, our warrior queen, Yeah Santua. Cheers, rap man. Uh, you taught me today, man. That was dope. Good, good. Is we done? Cut. <laughs>